Have I got news for you? This week, on his way to the Beijing National Museum, it's a bad day for the driver transporting soldiers from the priceless 2,000-year-old terracotta army. <laughs> In Somerset, there's a possible explanation as to why construction of Hinkley C nuclear power station is two years behind schedule. And despite more criticism for its continued production of unethical tuna, the chief executive of John West tries to relax on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> on Ian's team tonight is a former banker who became a professional comedian. So successful, she's now laughing all the way from the bank. Please welcome Sindhu V. <laughs> With Paul tonight is a Labour MP who is also a member of the Labour Friends of Israel. Not quite sure who the other one is. Please welcome <laughs> Jess Phillips MP. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Sindhu, here is yours. Oh, well, that's the President coming home from a war zone. That's Boris putting the laptop away quickly. And that's the uh, uranium. The deal's been ripped up. Yes. Trump's diplomacy has reached new heights. <laughs> he's convinced one nuclear power he's bonkers, and now he's moving on. <laughs> but he said it was a bad deal, and the Iranians were cheating on it anyway. Well, well I mean, it is a bad deal, but, it, again, everyone knew that. I mean, they, they, this very complex deal between Iran and the rest of the world is we give them a, a shed load of money, and they don't blow us up with weapons. <laughs> it's a very, very simple deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you take the money away, then they probably will. Um, and Trump has decided it's worth the risk. <laughs> it's, it's a new world. He has this idea, I think, that there can only be that much amount of nuclear stuff going on. So <laughs> North Korea have shut down. So this I have to start up <laughs> one in, one out. Um, so with the growing threat of nuclear conflict in the Middle East, a huge... And Boris, risk... that's the important bit. Yes. That Britain really matters on the world stage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're in good hands. There. We're in good hands. We sent Boris over to persuade the president not to do it. Oh, yes, but he only appeared on a television Fox program News. that he knew that the president watches. Called Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was suggesting that he should perhaps win the Nobel Peace Prize. You want yeah. to have a look at that? If he can fix the Iran nuclear deal, then I don't see why he's any less of a candidate for the Nobel Prize. Peace Prize than Barack Obama, who got it before he even did anything. <laughs> I mean, he has got a point. He has got a point. It's rather desperate, though, isn't it? Fine. They, they posed that picture just to show what he would look like if he was a building. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else Boris has been up to? Oh, well, we don't know, do well, we? While he was over there. <laughs> well, he was yeah. his Legal wife, agreements. Yeah, yeah he's us from also been walking out. along a, a corridor with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Is that well, newsworthy? I think so. All right, let's have a look. Great to see you, Mike. It's great to have you here. Absolutely. It's great. Thank you. It's great. These are important times. So. They are. They Thank are. you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. You. Thank you. <laughs> but he met Ivanka Trump as well, didn't he? He did. So he didn't meet the president, but he met the president's daughter, mm. which for Boris, probably a win. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Times, Iran has shipped out 98% of its enriched uranium. Where has it shipped it to? Is it Salisbury? I don't know. <laughs> I just wonder who's got it. Um, uh, Donald Trump feels his integrity is very much on the line uh, with this decision. How did he round off his speech on the, crap on the crapping of the deal? <laughs> Let me do that one again. Um, how did he round off his speech on the scrapping of the deal? 
Oh, you were right first time, I think. Yeah. <laughs> he said, when I make promises, I keep them. I mean, to be fair, when it comes to election promises, he mostly does. Even his harshest critics at the New York Times admit he's enacted or tried to enact 75% of his election promises in the first year, although Hillary is still at large. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the media are hanging on Trump's every word. Let's see how desperate they are to capture even the tiniest little emission from the man. Into trade between the US and China, and we'll do it. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so, to Stormy Daniels, what's the latest claim on the Stormy Daniels case? Michael Cohen has been, it looks like he's been receiving money from Russian oligarchs. Uh, he got vast amounts of money from these corporations. Yes. Mm. And he may or may not. Just for the lawyers. Mm. <laughs> have used that money to pay off the, the adult film actress. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's so complicated. The money was coming to a shell company in which he's a consultant. Right. So there's all these... I mean, by the time you get to it, you don't care. You're like, fine, just take the bribes. Let's just change the news, please. I mean, you know, it's a shell company and then it's him and then the, there's the Russians. Anyone would think you were a former banker. Uh. <laughs> You know, you can take the girl out of banking. <laughs> uh, it's the first true. time this audience has ever cheered a banker when you <laughs> came on. <laughs> Thank you. But they almost have to. I'm a brown woman. What can you do? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, so it's a complicated thing. But the money right. did go to Stormy and it came from Cohen. It came from Cohen. But in this strife-torn world, there is one small ray of hope. Which long-running conflict has finally been resolved this week? Oh, Katy Perry... And, <laughs> and, and the Swift girl. Taylor Swift. <laughs> yes. Joe, you know who made the vital first move? I didn't know they'd fallen now, Did so you I'm not? totally. Did you not? <laughs> get You're out of with touch, them. the political yeah. class. You've oh, got no, no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Real people's lives. Get with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, this is Donald Trump's pulling out of the Iranian nuclear deal. If you're wondering what that squiggle is, it's his cardiogram from that night with Stormy Daniels. <laughs> uh, Paul and Jess, take a look at this. Oh, this is President Putin. He's uh, just heard that Donald Trump's at the door, so he's uh, gone to see him. There's a man saluting him. He, he runs around quickly, that man. There he is again. Look, there he is. <laughs> he's gone around the back. And here he comes. Yeah. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be the leader. <laughs> And there he is, meeting the man with a flattest head in Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> we should say this yes. is him being inaugurated, mm. wasn't or it? Or his coronation, really. Mm. Coronation. coronation, really. Mm. Yes, this was the very, very long walk. Yes. So how many minutes was it? I mean, we edited I, it I down, I believe obviously. it's about nine, eight to nine yeah, minutes. Yes, nine minutes. Oh. I would have been tempted to show it in Fast Forward with the Benny Hill music. <laughs> <laughs> well, needless to say, obviously, yeah. Twitter have, have done a little bit of clever editing for us. Oh, have they? Uh, thanks to a Russian news blog, T-Journal, we've, uh, we've got this to enjoy. Yes. Oh, you can see it. <laughs> so much better. The KGBGs. <laughs> During the ceremony, the head of constitutional court got his words in a muddle. Uh, how did he end up describing Mr. Putin's new term? Forever. No. Exactly. He mixed up... There are two words in Russian that sound very, very similar, and mm -hmm. he mixed them up. Instead of declaring his new term an appointment, he called it a crime. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very similar words in Russian. We won't be seeing him again. No. <laughs> Not a chuck on the doorknob. I tell you what, let's mark this historic fourth term yeah. with a little quick buzz around. This really? is a little Russians. buzz around on Russia. Just a Russian. There we go. Yep, it's working. Yeah. Um, here we go. Our Russia round. Russia round. Ta da! Brilliant. Hey, hey! There it is. Yeah. Okay, traffic in Moscow is horrendous. What do wealthy Russians do to beat traffic jams? Yes, simply. helicopters. Well, that would be sensible. Yeah. But no. Move to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> they hire fake ambulances. <laughs> Which is incidentally how the cast of Holby City get home as well. <laughs> uh, what is the Russian tradition when it comes to bunches of flowers? They must always be an odd number. That's exactly right. Oh, no. They must <laughs> always be an odd number. <laughs> it's considered bad luck to give an even number. That's brilliant. It's bad luck to give an even number of flowers, unless at a funeral, in which case it's de rigueur. De rigueur mortis. Um, 
quite right. Yeah, sure. okay, there we are, this is fun. Um, <laughs> what happened to Russian beer in 2013? Mm -hmm. It had a new flavour. <laughs> it had a... Polonium. <laughs> <laughs> it was accepted for the first time as an alcoholic beverage. Uh, bad news for nursery schools, very, almost impossible to get the kids to sleep in the afternoon. Um, over 70% of Russia is what? Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, uh, Siberia is the answer. There we are. Um, that is the end of... <laughs> that is the end of our quiz. Let's do that again. That was fun. <laughs> um, um, Russia, as you know, is going to be hosting the World Cup this summer. What has FIFA asked every competing country to come up with? Sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> they want each country to pick a slogan to adorn the side of their team's bus. One of Iceland's three shortlisted slogans is Go, Go Iceland! <laughs> <laughs> Only if Waitrose is closed. <laughs> like what? you'd ever go to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have got a prawn ring. I love a prawn ring. Oh. Let's have an Iceland quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear one of the choices for Panama's slogan. Not a canal. Uh, it, it's um. a shortlisted, more than a dream, more than a canal. <laughs> Brilliant. Which is right. Uh, but now, finally, what are the choices for the England team slogan? It won't be long. <laughs> <laughs> the shortlist includes "Send us victorious," oh, God. "Drive forward as one," well, that's oh, God. and "Pride, passion, <laughs> together." <laughs> the best suggestion came from Joe Law on Twitter, who had "Keep the engine running." <laughs> okay. Is anyone going? I thought it was too dangerous to go. No. I think the British government is advising people not to go for all sorts of reasons, and certainly no politicians, royals or anything have been allowed to go. But to be honest, if the Russians want to kill us, we don't have to go there. I mean, they just... <laughs> <laughs> This is the swearing-in of Vladimir Putin following his election victory. In one of his decrees, Mr Putin pledged to increase average life expectancy from 72 to 78. <laughs> Presumably by telling the KGB to take it easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Between 2008 and 2012, Dmitry Medvedev became president, but according to the Times, Putin retained control behind the scenes. In very much the same way in the US, in 2016, Donald Trump became president, but Putin retained control <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> um, and now, Ian and Sindhu, here is another for you. That's a black death, Doctor. Rats spreading black death. Oh, and there is black death. <laughs> <laughs> This is the one where the head of UKIP, when they talked to him and said, well, you've done very badly, and he said, yeah, well, we're actually like the Black Death. We're going to be dormant, then we're going to surge back, or something <laughs> like this. He basically compared himself to Black Death, and they checked. They said, are you comparing yourself to Black Death? And he said, yes. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> and then they said, but you do realise it killed a lot of people. And he said, this is not a history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's that guy. It's yeah, that here guy. he is on Radio 4, listen to this. <laughs> no, it's not over at all. I mean, uh, think of the Black Death in the Middle Ages. It comes along and it causes disruption and then it goes dormant and that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, Jess, were you pleased with Labour's performance on the whole? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, what was that noise? Really. Uh, no, I was... I th oh, I'd hoped for more. You don't think you overhyped it beforehand? Well, I didn't, I don't think. But have we hit peak Corbyn? People keep asking me this, and obviously not in some places, but yes, in others. Because I keep... <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish answer. He's peaky somewhere, less peaky Bless elsewhere. He, he was Is off. it a BBC Two series? <laughs> peaky Corbyn. Peaky Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> um, here is Jeremy Corbyn himself giving an opinion on this. So we haven't seen Pete Corbyn, then? No, no, there's much more to come, and it's going to get even better. <laughs> What's so funny is everyone was so busy celebrating down at Plymouth, uh, they didn't see this. The Russians invade. They're just behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jess, mm -hmm. Jeremy Corbyn and lunch. What's this thing? Lunch? I read something about him trying to share his lunch with you. Oh, yeah, he's, he oft tries to give you lunch. A salad sandwich he offered me once. Uh, but the salad sandwich lost me a vote. On the doorstep, this man said to me, I can't vote for you, I can't stand that Jeremy Corbyn. And Danny, my son, was with me and he said, oh, but he's really nice, he offered us a salad sandwich. And the bloke went, that's a final nail. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you only became an MP for a bet? 
the worst part of a bet, yeah. Not the only reason I became an MP, but Did yeah. Did you lose the bet? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy said, who can become an MP quickest? Mm -hmm. And she didn't put in any bloody effort. <laughs> She's currently Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a thousand British people working in uh, Brussels for the EU. What has Jean-Claude Juncker suggested they do after Brexit? That they get citizenship. Of? Of Belgium. That's right. <laughs> See, I, I love Belgium. I think we should perhaps have a little... Uh, Belgium quick man. fire Belgium quiz round. <laughs> Should we do this? I feel I'm better oh. on Belgium. Mm. OK, where are 80% of the world's billiard balls made? Belgium. Jess. Belgium? Yes! <laughs> which, which country has the second tallest people in the world? <laughs> Jess. Is it Belgium? Yes! <laughs> This is your specialist subject. In which you are I said I was brilliant really on at good this. Footing in Belgium. Um, in this is just Remainer propaganda. Yeah, no. <laughs> Where is the so-called diamond capital of the world? Belgium. Antwerp. Antwerp. <laughs> Very strong indeed. Antwerp it is. We've got all the blood going. Didn't yeah. It? Didn't it? <laughs> This is the local elections. UKIP's Paul Oakley pointed to the positive outcomes of the Black Death, saying it led to economic growth and the Renaissance. It's a bit like saying how nice Hiroshima is. Now it's been pedestrianised. <laughs> <laughs> the Liberal Democrats regained control of Richmond. The comeback starts here, said Vince Cable. Well, that's nice. I thought he was dead. Um, <laughs> meanwhile... A think tank has suggested that we can fix the generation gap by giving £10,000 to all 25-year-olds. Really? They'll just spend it on smashed avocado and gender realignment. Now, <laughs> Paul and Jess, here is another one for you. Oh, yes, that's a bear being taken out of the zoo for an ice cream. He, he, the fact of the matter is if he can drive himself there, he deserves the ice cream. <laughs> uh, he didn't go there directly, he went to the woods for a comfort break. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is about the bear out of the zoo, giving him an ice cream, day out, and uh, then it started, people started to get angry about it. Yeah, That's pretty much cross. exactly it. This is a zoo in Alberta, Canada, which is facing charges after one of its bears was taken in a pickup truck to an ice cream drive through I mean, I have to say, that bear was being better with that ice mm. cream in that car than any of my Very kids good. have ever been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Very good. And it ate the cone. Yeah, mm. so nicely. Yeah, it didn't just bite mm. the bottom off and then no. pour yeah, it and then all it everywhere. Yeah. And then ask for a napkin. Every single time. Yeah, and then no. ask for a napkin and smack its sibling. It didn't. It was just... <laughs> Alberta province officials say they were bringing charges because the zookeepers didn't ask permission beforehand. The zoo's bears, which have been raised in captivity, are apparently very well trained and talented. One lucky bear got to participate in a study for a Scottish vet, during which he learnt how to pee in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that the vet or is that the bear? <laughs> Do I have some ice cream yeah. there? It's nice. I yeah. mean, it's quite fun. We should get that here. That would be amazing. Mm. Three days a year, it'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was difficult for the bear to decide which ice cream to have. For some reason, the first one it tried was too runny, the second was too cold, the third, just right. <laughs> the drive through attendant can be seen feeding the bear a large ice cream cone. I don't know if there were crushed nuts, but the guy could easily have had his face torn off. <laughs> and so to round two, the Six. picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, yep. teams. Yes. Ah, yes. yes. There's a man who was in a car. Yes, mm. yes. Um, yeah. And the Not entire either. car is full of bees. It was Wallace Leatherwood, uh, a beekeeper, uh, who drove for 40 miles with thousands of bees loose in his truck without getting stung once. He just put three boxes of the bees in the back of his cab. And uh, when he came back, there were bees everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so he did what anyone would do and just started driving. So let's, let's see how this played out for him. We got bees everywhere. I guess we'll make it home. We got them over here. We got them up here. And I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been so scared just saying, look at the road, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but who would have loved to have been in his cab? A bee fancier. <laughs> Justin O. Schmidt, an entomologist. Did, did is the on vicar drop him at the baptism? <laughs> <laughs> Justin O. Schmidt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
He's quite a hands-on researcher. He travels all over the world getting stung by insects to create a comprehensive pain index, ranking 83 insect stings on a spectrum of one to four. Here is Justin doing his, his work. There oh, he is. my God. Um, OK, here's fun. How does Justin rank the sting of the anthroporid bee? Three. One. Um, yeah, one. Yes, according to Justin, it's a pain level one. Almost pleasant. A lover just bit your earlobe a little too hard. Oh. <laughs> um, what That's about brilliant. the tarantula hawk? That looks nasty. Four. Four is exactly right, really? yes. Uh, blinding, fierce, shockingly electric. A running hairdryer has just been dropped into your bubble bath. <laughs> You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> dead. Um, what's the creepy crawly that tops his list, though? The absolute top when it comes to inflicting misery on its victim? Gove. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, is in fact the bullet ant. Oh yeah. There we are. Whose yeah. sting Justin oh. describes as like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail embedded <laughs> in your heel. Justin admits, I know people think I'm a bit crazy, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to answer a different set of questions. <laughs> Uh, this is North Carolina beekeeper Wallace Leatherwood, who bought three boxes of bees for $165 a box, then drove home with 3,000 bees loose in his cab. He later told reporters, I wasn't stung once. $165 for a box of bees, are you <laughs> worth? <laughs> <laughs> There's also a book out from scientist Justin Schmidt describing the amount of pain caused by different insect bites. According to Justin Schmidt, one of the most painful and dangerous ants is the bullet ant. Though an even more dangerous ant is this one, especially in a car. <laughs> it is time now for the odd one ant round. Your four are Christopher Plummer, Ed Balls, Bill and Melinda Gates, and Patrick Park, Donald Trump's first pick to be US ambassador to Austria. Well, the Austria is the clue, I think. Mm -hmm. You agree? Mm -hmm. mm. Christopher Plummer was in The Sound of Music. He's the Idlewise guy. Yep. <laughs> As he became known. <laughs> Ed Balls is very keen on the sound of music. Um, I'm surely he's the only one that's having a Hitler moustache being sucked off his face <laughs> by a very small vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh, yes, how stupid of yeah. me. <laughs> and this guy is the ambassador-elect to Austria? No, he... Trump offered him the right. ambassadorship right. of Austria on the grounds that he likes the sound of music. <laughs> he... <laughs> he was a friend of his from his club. So, and I don't know about them, do they like The Sound of Music? Bill and Melinda? Yeah. Have they bought it? Have they bought Austria? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Christopher Plummer didn't like The Sound of Music. He was in it yeah. and thought it wasn't any good. Yeah. That and is, in fact, the right one. answer. He is the odd one out. They all were obsessed with The Sound of Music. They all still are obsessed with The Sound of Music, apart from Christopher Plummer, who loathed it. How can anyone hate The Sound of Music? Because it's rubbish and long. <laughs> no, but it's also Sorry. long. But it's got great songs. Good songs. Name one. It's good. Do a deer, female deer. <laughs> Any Ray, song but that. Sun, we could be on Alexander's new album. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, Seriously. back to Christopher Plummer. What alternative title did he give the it... film? He called it the Sound of Mucus. <laughs> <laughs> um, even working with Julie Andrews, did he enjoy that? No, he hated uh, her. He said working with her was like being hit over the head with a Valentine's card. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really but, like Christopher Plummer. Um, yeah. I mean, what a great bloke. Uh, Patrick Park, Donald Trump's choice for US Ambassador to Austria, you're absolutely right. Yes. He's a Sound of Music obsessive. What did Mr Park most want to do when Trump first asked him to do the job? Climb every mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Days after his nomination, he told reporters, I'm flying to Vienna to check out the embassy, oh, then I'm going no. to Salzburg to see if the Von Trapp family <laughs> house is for rent. I've always wanted to live in the Von Trapp house. <laughs> but Bill and Melinda Gates, they're also huge yeah. fans of The Sound of Music. What was the theme for Melinda Gates' 50th birthday party? I'm 49 going on 50. <laughs> <laughs> in an interview with Vanity Fair, Melinda revealed that Bill threw her a huge party themed around her favourite film. Melinda said, the women were all in dirndls, the men in lederhosen, it was a ton of fun. Oh, good God. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, you're absolutely right. The answer is they're all obsessed with the sound of music, apart from Christopher Plummer, who hated it. According to the Mail Online, he hated making the film so much, he ate away his sorrows. Plummer consumed so many pastries, he got to the point where his costumes <laughs> no longer fitted. <laughs> Luckily, Julie Andrews made some new ones out of the curtains in the dressing room. <laughs> Uh, Ed Balls and his family went on a Sound of Music themed holiday where they wore lederhosen and cycled for several days. But the balls were sweaty after that. <laughs>
Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, Branchline News. It comes out on two Tuesdays. <laughs> and we start with Macaroni Mad Bride and Groom. What? Sectioned. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like something like have cheesy wedding have or cheesy something. Yeah, yeah. Um, get, get married in macaroni suits. Yeah, yeah you can have that. Um, have Mr. Macaroni as best man. A Glasgow couple have had a macaroni themed wedding. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> now, do tell, tell me which one she's got married to. <laughs> 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 Apparently, the couple met each other on an Italian food based dating site, Big Pepper Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, people called David most likely to what? Answered in the name of Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Be men. Walk the country off a cliff. Succeed. Succeed. I think we'll go with that, yes. Uh, people call David most likely to get top jobs. Uh, according to the Sunday Herald, the names James and Thomas appear most commonly at top universities and are also most popular names for tank engines. <laughs> uh, next, <laughs> if what the branch line news team is not guilty? If accused of mainlining heroin. <laughs> <laughs> branch line, mainline, mainline, branch line. <laughs> you may continue. You receive your newsletter email a little late. The branch line news team is not guilty. If you want something to read and your newsletter email is late, you can always use the replacement book service. <laughs> uh, uh, next, um, world's luckiest person, what, what, and what on same day? Oh yes, I saw this. Uh, world's luckiest person uh, leaves his job yep. and and wins the lottery on the same day. Yeah, oh, and and has and, his and, birthday. And and, and. That's, that's right. And, and. Um, yeah, retires, birthday well. has birthday, wins lottery. According to CNN, the lottery organisers would not divulge what he did for a living. My guess is lottery draw organisers. <laughs> <laughs> Next. When a driver had to freewheel his train for 16 miles after Bushy Station, astonishingly, what? He was still, still on time. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It mm. turned up at Euston one minute early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, sharks love what, but are stumped by what? Love football, but are stumped by cricket. <laughs> Got to be. No, it's not. But it's. What do you mean it's not? It, well, it's not. Of course it is. Yeah. It's a well-known fact. David Attenborough has filmed them. <laughs> Here, the shark disdains the football. <laughs> Sharks love jazz, but are stumped by classical. <laughs> <laughs> this is according. Oh, that's nonsense. This is according to marine research conducted by Scuba Doo Bap Bap Doo Bap Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Divers. And so the final scores are nine to Sindhu and Ian, oh, but Paul and Jess, fine. 11. Oh! Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Back before we go, it's just time for the captain competition. Well known trainer enters horse at Grand National. <laughs> And I leave you with news that in Scarborough, someone's in big trouble after kicking over the wrong sandcastle. <laughs> In Washington, Donald Trump insists he hasn't told nearly as many lies as the media suggest and is keeping his own records. <laughs> <laughs> and there are reports of a white fit being driven erratically in the Windsor area. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Next this evening, a home-from-home home anniversary surprise doesn't exactly go to plan. Now, that is not a surprise, given that the anniversary in question is the Hackett's. Hello, it's Agnes here with a date for your diary, Saturday the 19th of May. It's the event of the year. Oh, there'll be love in the air. And then it all kicks off. And at the end, everyone goes down to the pub and gets all round to Mrs. Brown.